Hello everyone, and welcome back to Rapid Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. Today, we look at how to solve the problem on screen right now. If you've been working on big projects, this can be a familiar sight. So over here I have this model with elements like doors, windows, and rooms. However, when I try to create a door schedule, this one on the right, even though I have other doors parameters coming in just fine, those relating to the rooms where the door opens from and opens to, all of these are empty. And the reason is this, because this is an example of a big project. In Revit, we certainly want to structure our files for the best performance possible. That's why I have here all my rooms in a separate model. When I try to hide it, you will see the rest, our doors and windows and walls are live in this model. Now, because they are not in the same models as the rooms, the connection between doors and windows and rooms has been broken. I will show you today how to reconnect elements in the main model to rooms in your Revit links. It's much easier than you may have thought, and it's also very quick to do. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now, because we do tutorials like this every single week. Okay, let's begin the process. Firstly, you know when you go and make this kind of schedule here, what people usually get those columns from is here. Under fields, they can have door parameters and then those pertaining to rooms. For example, this one here from room number, that's the one I got from this list. Similarly, for two room number, I got it from the two room list that Revit gives me by default. Anyway, we see now that it just don't work in this scenario. So what can we do? We need to first create identical parameters as shared parameters. To begin that process, we need to go to manage go to shape parameters and firstly make sure we are using the correct shape parameters file now i know for a small practice this may not be a big problem but in bigger design firms you may have different shape parameters files lying around in different locations maybe one for mep one for architectural and one for structure and so on in that case make sure you have in here the path to the correct shape parameters file that you want to use for the rest of your project or at least this tutorial if that's not correct simply choose browse here and open the right one for you okay so now let's assume this is the correct file the next step is to make our new shape parameters firstly you can choose to put them in one of the existing groups but for now let's make a new group here just for doors so when this message comes up simply name this doors that will be the name of our new group. You can see there that's an additional entry. So on the doors now, I can go ahead and create my new parameters. Let's choose new here. And then name this one from room. Because we want to use this to replicate this parameter there. It should be a text parameter. Because here I want to put in room numbers as values. And as you know in Revit, room numbers are text. We can now confirm this one and choose new parameter again. The second one, you guessed it, should be named to room. And just like before, we can choose the parameter type or data type to be text. Click OK now, and I have two to use from now on. I can now do OK. Go back to my schedule. Go to fields and just try and find the parameters here. Well, that's actually a trick question because they are not here yet. We need to do one extra step now. Just go to Manage, choose Project Parameters. And in here, we need to add them from the Shape Parameters file to this project. Let's do Add. And now go for Shape Parameters. I can now do Select. And simply go to the right parameter group, Doors in this case, and choose one of the parameters I want to add. This one will be From Room. Click OK. Make sure you are adding this shape parameter as an instance parameter because we may have hundreds if not thousands of doors in our project. Each one may have a different room number for from room and to room. So whenever that happens, you wouldn't want to have to make a new door type. That would be a nightmare. That's why we want to keep this instance, not type. Next step, I want to choose to apply this parameter now to this category, doors. And just for future reference, we also can do the same for windows. I can do windows here as well. If I hide unchecked categories, these should be the only two you can have now on your screen. You can do more for this project demo today. I will just do two categories. Let's do OK to confirm this. 
and that's the first one in. We can now repeat the same steps to make the second one in here as well. Let's go for share parameters again. Select this time two room. Do OK. And just like before, we are applying this to doors and windows. Also important, this one should also be an instance parameter for the same reason I mentioned earlier. We're going to do OK. And these two are now ready for us to use. Let's now go back to the schedule. And now it's possible for us finally to see them here from room and add them to this list of schedule fields. So first one there. And then the two room one can go in here as well. Now, because I have these two, I can now remove the two useless one. Just click on this red arrow to remove them. Click OK now. And the schedule didn't change much. You still have three columns. But now we will see a very quick way to scan the models for element and room association and fill in these two values for us automatically. This method requires using an add-in for Revit called RV Room Link. It's totally free to try, so if you haven't got it installed already, simply go down to this video description and follow the link there to get RV Room Link. For me, I've got it installed already, so I can just go to the Add-ins tab and then run RV Room Link from the RV Boost panel. So that's the Add-ins user interface. You simply have to follow the numbers to make it work. So here, number one two and three these are the three steps you need to do to enable room data sync to our new two parameters here so the first step is to select Revit files that contain room data or rooms in our case here let me just show you quickly down here on the project browser under Revit links if I expand this now you will see I have in this model two other links loaded into it that's why when you go to open RV room link it's going to list here the main model on the first line and also the links below it. This offers much flexibility because no longer do you have to keep your rooms in the same file as with your Revit elements. They can be in any file and that allows you to structure your Revit project into as many files or models as possible or with a view to optimize performance, not to get around some Revit limitation. So because I have selected our main model here, you can see RV Room Link has already begun checking our files. And it says here, the selected item has no rooms in it. That's what I know already. So let's untick this one and go for those that are more useful. This one here, D1 Rooms. That's the model where I have my rooms in. The rooms that I know, I want to associate information here to my door schedule. So when I change this to the second item selected, if I go now to this room parameter to copy from menu, I can see all the room parameters that are coming from that Revit link. This not only includes default parameters, but also any shared or custom ones that you have added in this D1 rooms file. For now, I want to get room numbers into my main model. So let's go for number here. We'll come back to this step number three in a minute. For now, let's move on to the second step. Select elements to receive room data. This is where also RV Room Link offers more flexibility to your workflow. You can either choose to copy room data from this link or more than one links here to only the selected elements in your main project or to all elements of certain categories that you can select down here. For example, if I close this for a minute, select this building wing over there, go for filter, uncheck none except for doors, I have now 11 doors selected. When I go to Add-ins and run RV Room Link, that will allow me to inject room information only to those 11 doors. And the way to do it is by selecting here only selected elements. However, this is not common because if you only have a few to do, then you may have as well just done it manually. The real power of this add-in is this. You can go to the second option and then select any element category in this list to tell RV Room Link to get all of those elements under those categories and populate them with room information. So for today, I will go for doors. Of course, you can also go for windows, but the workflow will be completely the same. Before moving on, I just want to point out that this list here is dynamic. It only shows element categories that are being used in this main model here. So for example, if I don't have any ceilings in this model, this checkbox will not be here. 
and vice versa. If I have structural foundations, they will show here in this same structural items group. So far so good, we can now move on to the final step, which is to set some data sync options. The first one will let you choose to override existing values or not. This is handy if you have already some room information in these parameters that you want to keep. In that case, you may want to uncheck this box here. That means RV room link will retain any existing parameter values and only fill in a parameter when it's empty. Next one is to choose a face for your required rooms. As you know in Revit, a room can be on any particular face in a project. So here, as I have selected this one single link there, when I go to this menu, you will see the link contains two different phases, existing and new construction. It is here where I have the power of actually populating new elements with room information from the previous phase, if that's what I need. In that case, I would go for existing as a phase for the required rooms. Anyway, I quite know now that this is not the case, I want to choose new construction here instead. Now these two drop downs together, they tell RV room link to get all rooms of this face from those links and then read their parameter named here, number. Next step, we need to specify the parameters and the face of elements in our main model that should receive room information. So the parameter to copy information to, you can choose from this list. This is also a dynamic list because if I go and check a few more items here, for example, and go back to this menu there, you will see that's a much shorter menu because here you only have parameters that are common to those categories. In my case, I only want to have door parameters. So let's go back here, check none and check only doors. Back to here, I can see that the two parameters that I added from before, they are here already. From room is there and two room is here. For now, let's go for from room. Next step, similar to selecting the face for the rooms, I can now select a face for my elements. In this case, I would just go for new construction. This is, however, a bit more flexible than choosing face for the rooms, because here, even though I'm looking at the new construction to get the latest elements in my file, I want to also have elements from the previous phases receiving some room data as well. In that case, I can simply go down here and tick this box to include existing elements from the previous phases. That is to say, if an element is of the existing phase, but in new construction it has not been demolished, then this combination will make sure that elements will also receive room information if available. Looking good? There are a few more settings down below, but for now let's run this anyway and see what we have. So I will go down here and click on the big red button, Sync Room Data. And you can see there, very quickly, the process has been done. And you have here in this column, many room numbers for the from room parameter of these doors. There are empty ones, of course, because not all doors have rooms on both sides. But compared to doing this manually, this is still a much faster way. Anyway, we haven't finished because the two room parameters also need some value. Let's go back to edits and rerun RV room link. Okay, so here this is where these extra settings will make more sense. Firstly, I want to change the target parameter from from room, like before, to to room. Because now it will be the second column I want to populate. When I go down to extra settings, the first one is whether I want RV room link to take best guess for elements without room calculation points. Now, what does that mean? Let's close this one for a moment. And if I say select this door here and go to edit family, you can see there the door is looking good, but it's missing something. It's missing room calculation points. If I go under properties, there's a tick box here to turn on those points. And here they are. This one is for the room where the door opens from, and the other one here is for the room where the door opens to. That's why we call them from room here and to room here. It's an easy thing to do to your door families to ensure best room detection results. But let's say in a big project, you may have a hundred of doors families. Doing this one by one for them may take a bit of time, and that would be a very boring task for someone unlucky. That's why in the project here, RV room link offers to do that task for us on the fly. Let's open it back from add-ins. All you have to do 
to tell RV room link to construct those from room and two room points for you is this. Go down here and make sure this box is selected. By doing so, RV room link will detect the doors or the elements location points and then copy that points if required, for example for doors and windows, to make from room and two room points on the fly for you. That way it will ensure the best room detection results with minimal effort from yourself. You can also specify how far away those from room and to room points will be constructed compared to each door's location by changing this tolerance value down here. At the moment, that's 100 mil. What that means is, if I go back to editing this door for a moment, that setting means RV room link will find the door's location point somewhere here and then copy it to the right by 100 mil to get the on the fly to room point and it will also copy this location point to the left by 100 mil to get the from room calculation point. Of course, if you increase that tolerance value to maybe 300 or 500 mil, you may get better room detection result. But that may also give you false or incorrect room detection outcome. So that's something you may have to keep in mind. That's why I would suggest going for a small value at first, and if you still have a lot of empty cells after the room data sync, you can go back here anytime and increase this value. And when you run this sync room data again, with the override existing values box unticked, RV room link will try to find more rooms for you. The next setting is to choose whether for doors and windows, that RV room link should get room data on the from side or on the to side. Previously, we left this as the default setting, which is from rooms. But now, because I'm trying to get two room points, let's switch this now to two room. Okay, that's good for the second run now. Let's click on sync again. And here we go. That's almost fully populated, much better than the from room side. So if I get this door, for example, that's the one there I can see already. Is opening from room number 122 into room number 121. Really easily done. Anyway, what should we do for those empty cells? How about we check on this door here? I will see it in the model like this. That's obviously an external door. So, our read room link correctly detects that it opens from room 130, but where it opens to, there's no room there. In our case, we can actually tell RV room link to fill in here a default value and make our schedule complete. Let's go back here now and run it again. Here's where we can make use of the last setting available for us here. It's called the default value if no room is found. So in our case, I can confidently put in here external. Just a simple text, but now if I do sync room data again, you will see now that's external and the same here as well. So how about this door? Why does it still have an empty parameter? Let's see it now. We can see which level it's on. So that's level three. We can now open the level three floor plan. Maybe bring it to this side. And then highlight this element in this level. Okay, so that's the door there, and as you can see, there's a room there, but the room doesn't seem to be bounded. Every room link again is useful because now we can see if we go through those doors with the empty parameter, we can quickly see as well room issues in our project. And this is not useful only for doors. RV room link works the same way for windows, furniture items, components. Or pretty much anything that you can place by clicking RV room link can help you find their rooms much quicker even if the rooms they're supposed to be in belong to a different Revit file. Additionally, if you have rooms coming from more than one file, for example, let's say I have rooms coming from here and from here as well, RV room link is smart enough to give an element a room that contains it the most. All of this is to ensure you get the best room detection result possible. If you want to try RV Room Link completely for free, simply go down to the video description and use the link there. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to this channel because we do tutorials like this every single week. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next video.